Good evening to you from me, Hubert Gregg. It's hark back time again. I don't know what slides the quicker, the time from one Friday club meeting to the next or the 26 and a half minutes when we get there. Let's not waste a moment. Get whatever it is you're drinking, put your feet up and let me toast you in jaggers and taggers. As I say again, thanks for the memory. <laughs> again from the square chair. So, the old man with the scythe has sliced away half a year. But who cares? That's what the grape was made for, or the gin. Never, said Laurie in Oklahoma, have I asked an August sky, where has last July gone? And in South Pacific, Nellie Forbush was high as the flag on the 4th. <laughs> I'm as normal as blueberry pie No more a smart little girl with no heart I have found me a wonderful guy I am in a conventional dither With a conventional star in my eye And you will note there's a lump in my throat When I speak of that wonderful guy I'm as trite and as gay as a daisy in May A cliché coming true the 4th of July If you'll excuse an expression I use, I'm in love I'm in love, I'm in love I'm in love, I'm in love With a wonderful guy No more a smart little girl With no heart, she has found her A wonderful guy conventional star in my eye and you will note there's a lump in my throat when i speak of that wonderful guy i'm as trite and as gay as a daisy in may a cliche coming true i'm bromidic and bright as a moon happy night pouring light on the dew i'm as corny as kansas in august High as a flag on the 4th of July If you'll excuse an expression I use I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love I'm in love with a wonderful guy Margaret Whiting taking a bite out of Rogers and Hammerstein Barbara Williams, hello to you on the Isle of Wight Dear Hubert Gregg, I always listen to your program because it makes me feel young again. I know all the songs. <laughs> Splendid. I was taken as a special half-term holiday treat to Streatham Hill to see Wonderbar starring Carl Brisson. I was enthralled by the magic of theatre. Little did I know that a few years later I would be part of that magic as one of Mr Cochrane's young ladies in his 21st review Streamline at the Palace Theatre. Marvellous. This was the hit Tango from Wonderbar. Tell me I'm forgiven for daring to see Our love is a thing apart Tell me I'm forgiven for spreading the news I'm happy to lose I love the blood. 
wonder, though I can understand. Folly and love go traveling hand in hand. So tell me I'm forgiven for daring to show the rest of the world I love you so. Sometimes I feel that you'd understand. That I stand for you, dear. How we might go through life hand in hand as other lovers do. Sometimes I feel I'm playing with fire that my desires misled me, fearing that one day you might inquire who was the fool who said. Brisson, who began as Carl Pedersen, a milkman, went on to become the amateur middleweight boxing champion of Scandinavia, took to the stage and became what we call a matinee idol. He had become an excellent dancer by the time I saw him from the front row of the gods in the Apache and joined a huge stage door queue to collect his autographs. He sat in an open Rolls Royce with his sister Tilly, his co-star, and some said not strictly his sister thought I'd throw that in. Hollywood grabbed him. Luckily, his boxing career hadn't cauliflowered his ears or beaten his brain to a pulp. I have two videos of Brisson in Murder at the Vanities, in which he sang Cocktails for Two, BSJ, of course, before Spike Jones, and All the King's Horses, in which he pursued Mary Ellis for the little white gardenia. Incidentally, it was Evelyn Lay who gave Brisson his big chance on the English stage when she chose him for her Danilo in The Merry Widow. Your letter, Anthony Russell in Bristol, is headed The Lillian Harvey Collection. Well, you have been amassing memorabilia for ten years. Here is the wee English girl who became a German film star, which must have surprised her mother. Her regular co-star was Willy Fritsch, who wore a ton of Lippenstift. That's what I remember of Willy Fritsch. Lipstick. Miss Harvey was charming. Her big movie was Congress Dances, in which she sang, Das gibt's nur einmal, das kommt nicht wieder. She recorded it in English, too. Be 
Lillian Harvey, that was, who went early into Europe. The Ink Spots began as a swing group. It was only later that they went into the slow style with Bill Kenny singing high and Orville Hoppy Jones talking low. Here's an early one in which you hear Kenny calling to Charlie Fuqua to come in on guitar. He had less opportunity later. And to Brother Hoppy, Deke Ivory Watson is there too. Yes, yes. Won't does my baby call me honey? Yes, sir. Mm, does she let me spend her money? Yes, sir. Whoa, when I hear her gentle sighs and she rolls her big black eyes, will that make goose pebbles rise? Yes, sir. Take it, Charlie. Yow, sir. Is that gonna be a wedding? Yes, sir. With the news around already spread? Yes, sir. Mm, when we truck up side to side and the play here comes the bride, will I be poked out with pride? Yes, sir. Take it, brother Hoppy. Say she was single. Yowza. Whoa, when I went up to a flat, someone demanded who was that. I trucked on out without my hat. Yowza. early ink spots. I remember a classic first night in the middle thirties. C.B. Cochrane had prepared the coronation review for the crowning of King Edward VIII. As we know, this didn't happen, so Cocky changed the title to Home and Beauty. I took a lady to the first night. A Cochrane first night is always an occasion. Clad in my white tie and tails, and she in her billowing frock, I sat in a taxi in Trafalgar Square for a good twenty minutes in a queue of them waiting to turn into the Strand and make the last hundred yards to the Adelphi Theatre. They held the curtain, not only for me, I think. The evening was electrifying. The stars were Nelson Keyes, Binny Hale, and a svelte Hungarian lady named Gita Alpa. Miss Alpa sang very well in a glittering setting, accompanied on two pianos by Ravich and Landar, appearing in London for the first time. The number ones closed that's to say the curtains upstage of the main curtain, and through them stepped a smutty-faced chambermaid. The contrast, whether planned by Cocky or subtly suggested to him by Binny, 
I don't think Miss Alpa appreciated British humour enough to know what was going on. It was amazing and marvellous. Benny brought the house down. I like a nice cup of tea in the morning For to start the day you see And at half past eleven Well, my idea of heaven is a nice cup of tea I like a nice cup of tea with me dinner And a nice cup of tea with me tea And when it's time for bed There's a lot to be said For a nice cup of tea You can talk about your science your airships in the sky I can do without the wireless And you'll never see me fly The public benefactor of the universe for me Is the genius of thought of pouring water onto tea I like a nice cup of tea in the morning For to start the day you see And when I set the breakfast in Well, my idea of tea is a fourth or a fifth cup of tea like a nice cup of tea with me dinner and a nice cup of tea with me tea and when it's getting late almost anything can wait for an Adler shaving mirror I have played Hand to Mouth Boogie before, the live version from one of the wartime command performances. On this CD, Larry is accompanied, it says, by the John Kirby Orchestra. I can only hear two instruments apart from the mouth organ, John Kirby on bass and Billy Kyle on piano. Can you hear more? That was Buster Bailey. We heard him for a moment there. Larry Adler in an item from the new release by Avid. Asked for AMSC 703. It's a great shaving mirror called Larry Adler. But if you need a number, say AMSC 703. My turn to butt in with Gordon Langford at the piano. A lullaby, it's supposed to be. But since the baby in question is an adult, it's too joyous to lead to sleep. This is the lullaby to end all lullabies. This is the lullaby to make my baby sleep. My baby loves to talk. I love to hear her talk. Then comes the quiet time when baby has to sleep. He, oh my, she can babble. Like the brook in the book, I confess. Rock-a-bye, I don't mind the babble. 
Because a year ago, my baby babbled yes. My baby's mind for keeps. I see that baby sleeps. I kiss her ruby lips and close my baby's eyes with the lullabies who end all lullabies. Like the brook in the book, I confess. Rock a bye, I don't mind the babble. Cause a year ago my baby babbled, yes. Now baby's mine for keeps. I see that baby sleeps. I kiss her ruby lips and close my baby's eyes with the lullaby. And the hush of by with the lullaby to end all lullabies. It's a song from me to you. Thank you, Gordon. Nice bit of eight beat there. Hello to you, Mrs. Terry Russell in Dawlish, Devon. Your email reached me via Roy Oakshaw. Thank you so much. My goodness. Dear Hubert Gregg, this is by way of a very big thank you for the most magic 30 minutes on the best medium there still is. Wireless. I do agree about that. The wireless, I mean. It's also the quickest half hour. Well, it's 26 and a half minutes, actually. And when you say no more from me until a senite, I and all your listeners, I should think, feel you should have at least an hour a week. Ah. <laughs> And the end of each series leaves me wishing the Friday Club could always be on. Thank you again so much, Mrs. Russell. Email me any time. You like Jo Stafford. Here she is with Gordon McRae. Picture you upon my knee Just he for two and two for tea, me for you and you for me alone. Nobody near us to see us or hear us, no friends or relations on weekend vacations. We won't have it known, dear, that we own a telephone. Start to bake a sugar cake for you to take for all the boys to see. We will raise a family, a boy for you, a little girl for me. Can't you see how happy we were? Cray and Joe Stafford duetting us to a close until the seven nights time when I expect to be in the square chair as ever. Write me a list or two if you can be bothered. My thanks again to my producer Roy Oakshot. Until we re-meet, this is Hubert Gregg saying harking back to Rogers and Hammerstein Josh Logan not only directed South Pacific but contributed a hell of a lot to the script. Hammerstein hadn't been in the forces and didn't know how to write about them. Josh had and did. 
Hammerstein was so impressed he mentioned that Josh might have a small percentage with the accent on small. The generosity didn't last, even without the accent, because Hammerstein reneged. It may have been that Rogers reneged for him. Oscar announced to Josh that they thought it would be wrong to admit to the public that a Rogers and Hammerstein musical wasn't. No more than from me, Hubert Gregg, broadcasting on 88 to 91 FM, wireless 2 from the BBC in London, but to say au revoir. To you. This weekend, Radio 2 travels to the Isle of Man for more operatic gems featuring the BBC Concert Orchestra. I got plenty of nothing and nothing's plenty for me. Opera Encore from the Royal Concert Hall in Douglas from 7 o'clock this Sunday evening on 88 to 91 FM and online at bbc.co.uk slash Radio 2. 88 to 91. Radio 2. Friday night is music night. Good evening, everyone. This is Brian Kay of the BBC Hippodrome in London, inviting you once again to join the BBC Concert Orchestra, led by Cynthia Fleming and conducted by Barry Wordsworth. Our guest singers are Mary Hegarty and Geoffrey Black, along with the toe-tapping Charleston Chasers. And they're all assembled for your special pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, in our weekly programme of music for everybody.
Just two days after the annual celebration of American independence, we heard, appropriately enough, John Philip Sousa's flag-wagging march, the Stars and Stripes Forever. Always a favourite, and never more so than at this special time of the year. And we're going to stay stateside as the strings of the BBC Concert Orchestra play one of the most popular of all 20th century American orchestral works, the Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber. It started out as a movement for string quartet, but the composer soon realised that there was more mileage in it. So he fleshed it out for the entire section, as well as making yet another version for unaccompanied voices, singing the words of the Agnus Dei. But this is how it's best known, as the wonderfully rich Adagio for Strings. <laughs> 